Hi everyone, uh, today we discuss about first hop redundancy protocol and to understand the idea let's consider this network so for example we have some users on the left hand side so you can see here we have these users and let's suppose that, that these all users are within the same subnet and if some of the users wants to send some information to other user which is on the same subnet then they can make use of this switch and then switch will have a MAC table and with the help of that MAC table, the switch can actually send and receive the information from these devices and uh, the communication can take place in between these nodes. But if any of the user, for example, if this user wants to send some information to some other user, which is somewhere here, which is on some other subnet, then we configure these all users or these all computers with the information about a default gateway and that default gateway is basically maybe layer 3 device and in this case this is a router so that's the default router so if there's those users want to send some information to some user which is not on the same subnet then that information will be handed over to this default router and now uh, from this point and onward, this becomes the responsibility of this router to forward this information to the user which is on the different subnet. But now, there is some problem that if, for instance, if this default router fails because of any reason, if this is not working, then what happens? This becomes a single point of failure. It means now, after the failure of this router, we will be disconnected with the rest of the world. So we will not be connected with this part. And this is basically the first hop. So from our user, maybe from this user, this is the first hop. So in case of this first hop failure, what we can do. So for that, one of the solution is that instead of one default router, we can have Two default router maybe three default router and we can configure these computers with the information of this default router maybe first time we are using this router so we will have an IP address of this one in all these computers default gateway information and when this fails then we can go to all these machines and we can configure the default gateway information of the second router maybe this interface see this interface if this fails but now the challenging issue is that if we have hundreds of computers then we need to configure these all nodes or all these computers with the new default gateway information why not to come up with some solution and in that case this is these are some redundancy protocol so first hop redundancy protocol which help us to manage this group of default router so for example we group these default routers in some group and so we make a collection and they collectively act as a single default router so for them all for the for these users we will have a single ip address even though we can have multiple uh, routers but for this one in the in the windows machine or any machine we will have a single ip address which will act as a default gateway and who will be performing or who will be giving us services that will be the matter of this, these router which are collectively are, 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 are in combination working for us so let's remove this uh, again so it means these these collection of default router will act as a virtual router maybe as a single virtual router and uh, they all will have a single IP address for a default router. Okay. And uh, this single IP address is actually known as virtual IP address. So it means they collectively will share this IP address as a default router. And these all machine will have this IP address as a default gateway information. So within this boundary whosoever is going to provide us the services we don't have any concern if this fails or this fails or maybe third one fails who is going to provide service our this virtual ip address of the default gateway will remain same and how to, how they are going to manage this will not be the concern of these users so what happens 
in this case maybe one of them uh, one one of the routers will act in the active state so at one time only one router will be active it means at that time only that router will be providing the services of default gateway to all these users so maybe if we just say so yeah so you see these will be providing the services to all of them so they can actually send so this this will be used for for the active router and the second router will act as a standby router and the job of this stand router will be that this will be in the standby mode it means that router will be in the waiting state and this router will take over when this active router fails in this case if this fails this will take over and for that they use so who will be acting as an active router who will be acting as a standby router so we need to have a mechanism and if one fails then how to get this information so we need a mechanism and so we need some rules and for that they exchange these messages and these messages are collectively known as are they collectively a part of a protocol and that protocol is hot standby router protocol so hsrp is the protocol used to manage this collection of routers and now after this when we are using this router this virtual IP will be specifically known as HSRP virtual IP. It means that will be the collection of this uh, IP address of uh, this collective default gateway. And this uh, HS, HSRP is basically the part of a family of protocols. So this is actually first hop redundancy protocol is basically a family of protocols and this is one of them which we are going to discuss in this video of course there are some other uh, protocols like we have this virtual router redundancy protocol that is actually an open standard and then we also have uh, this gateway load balancing protocol by cisco by the way this protocol is also by cisco so this is a cisco proprietary protocol Okay, so this is the protocol which is going to manage this collection of routers pro to provide us the default router services. Let's go a bit in details. So in this case, this H, uh, SRP works in active standby. So there is one router in active mode and second router is in standby mode. So this is actually active standby model and this is also known as active passive so this will be active and this is passive so this is also known as active passive model and uh, so important thing is that at one time only one router will be active and this hsrp actually maintains a virtual mac address so in addition to this virtual ip address you see we have this virtual ip address so these router will be using this virtual ip address but to send the frame from this node to the uh, to the uh, on, on this uh, data link layer they also need the mac address so they also have a virtual mac address there and that virtual mac address will not be of any specific router in this case so that will be the collective virtual mac address so in this case they these router will maintain this virtual ip as well as virtual mac address and uh, these hosts actually connect with these default router using virtual IP and virtual MAC address. And for that, they actually maintain an R table entry. So in this R, tab, R table entry, for example, you can see they have the information of the default gateway. So yes, they have this IP address have this virtual MAC. So there can be any number here. So the second user, so all of the users will be maintaining this, maintaining and the, uh, this virtual IP as virtual MAC information about the default gateway. Now, uh, let's discuss the failover. So if there is some failure, so let's suppose that if one of the router fails, so let's suppose that this active router which is working and if this fails, then what happens? So of course, this HSRP, which is actually a protocol, which that protocol will detect the failure of this router and that standby router will be converted into the active state. And now, from this point and onward, these all uh, 
computers will be sending the information to this router but their R table will not change only these router or this protocol will send this information or this change information to the switch so now the switch will have maybe this switch will be connected with the with second port from here so this switch will maybe change the entry that now this port is connected with the default uh, router so previously maybe this second maybe maybe some different port was connected with this router but now this port is, will be used for the default router but only switch will be conveyed about this information but these rest of the users will be using the same so so the default router using virtual ip so they all will be using the same uh, information in their ARP table so you see this is the same so virtual ip as well as virtual mac will remain same these users will not have any effect they'll be using same information even though whatever is happening within this boundary and that will be handled by this HSRP or the standby route uh, redundancy protocol. Now there is a bit information about load balancing. So up to this point, we have a feeling that maybe we are wasting some resources. Maybe one of the uh, router is in is standby mode and it's not working any, any it's not doing anything and maybe we have a lot of traffic and uh, all the traffic is actually flowing from this default router so this is not good why not to use the second router as well so this is known as load balancing so what happens in this case maybe we can have one strategy that we can group some of the users in using some subnets in one VLAN so maybe we can say VLAN 1 and then we can group some other uh, users in VLAN 2 using different subnets and now for one subnet this router will be as will act as an active router and for the same subnet the second router will act as a standby router so all the traffic, it means all the traffic from this subnet will be traveling through this router. And this will be standby for the subnet one, maybe VLAN one. Let's remove this one. And for this subnet, for this subnet, this router, so this router will be active router and that this one will be the standby. So it means the traffic from this subnet will be flowing from this router and at the same time this router will be the standby router for the users which are in this VLAN so in this way we can somehow um, introduce the idea of load balancing in this HSRP protocol as well and uh, yeah this is the end and uh, I would like to thank you for your time and I hope to see you in some other video